Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Aussie Flipper. My name's Matt Diedrich and I am an online reseller. What that means is I'll buy a product for the sole purpose of flipping it online for a profit. Hey, awesome to have you along for the ride today. It's gonna to be a really fun episode. I've got my 10 best sold items plus my weekly sales numbers. If you're here for the very first time, I do these videos every single Sunday. The sole purpose is to help you out there as a reseller find the same item and make the same profit. So if you're in a reselling by any means, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, give the video a like, it really does help the YouTube channel out a lot. Really pumped to get into this one. My 10 best sold items, some weekly sales numbers. Hopefully you get a kick out of it. Let's get started. Hey, before we get started, question of the day, guys. Can you let me know in the comments below what was your best sold item of the week? What profit you made, what item it was, where you picked it up? Give me a bit of a story in the comments. I'd love to hear it. First item of the week that I've got for you here is my Adidas Ultra Boost 19s. Uh, now, this is my favorite item because I did a bit of retail arbitrage last Thursday for the very first time. I picked these up for $78 in the Adidas store and I sold them the very next day for $120. I noticed on eBay they were selling for around $130 and they were selling quite well. So that's the reason why bought these particular shoes. Obviously the $78 helped as well, but this has resulted in a $42 profit. And what it's done is it's given the proof of concept that you can go out and you can buy these items and sell them for profit on Marketplace. So I was really pumped to get a really quick result here of $42. In future, I will go and actually up the price a little bit. I might put them on Marketplace at 140 and see how I go. Put a few extra dollars in my pocket, but I just wanted to test the waters. Put it in at a lowish price of 120 and just see what would happen. And they did move quick because they are brand new, really good shoes. So it was a cool one to kick things off today. The first pair of shoes that I sold as a retail arbitrage, the Adidas Ultra Boost 19s. Continuing the theme of retail arbitrage, I've picked up these Nike Free 3.0 fly knits. Now, plain black and white, not my type of shoe. They were $200 brand new though, and they had been marked down to just $90, but the promotion was also to take a further 50% off. Now, that means that I bought these shoes brand new for $45 out of the Nike store. They were comping really well on eBay for about $120. So I've gone ahead and I've listed these on the Facebook marketplace for $95. And within the space of two days, these were sold. So the lady on these particular shoes asked if I could deliver and I said yes, absolutely, for $10. So it's worked out to be a $105 sale price on these. I've made a $60 profit in the space of just two days. And just like the Adidas shoes, it is a proof of concept that retail arbitrage does actually work. And if you are new to it, I highly encourage you to get out to the outlet stores and try and find that item that's 60 to 70% off and then obviously sell it for your profit on either Facebook or eBay. Um, because it really does work. These two shoes have really shown me that it does work and I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it a whole lot more. So uh, two really cool items to kick off today's episode, the Adidas shoes and the Nikes. I've made collectively there almost a bit. Well, yeah, I have about $100 profit. Next item up, guys, is this mountain bike that I picked up off a garage sale just a couple of weeks ago. This one was a $20 purchase, and I really do think it's a great category to get into the bikes. I've spoken about it a little bit on previous episodes, but they just move really well, and I think over the next few months, they're gonna move even better um, leading into the summertime here in Australia. But I've picked this one up for 20, and I've gone and sold it within the space of 22 days for $90. Now this one needed a little bit of work. I had to clean it up quite extensively. There was a lot of rust that I had to take off, a bit of dirt as well to clean out. But in the end, $90, $70 profit. The bikes are a great category. I've done a couple of them now. Um, looking forward to selling a few more into the summer months. But uh, item number three, the mountain bike. Now if I'm honest guys, I've really battled with furniture sourcing this week and it's affected my sales numbers. Um, I've just not been able to find any good unique pieces out there to purchase. But luckily there was this one item of uh, bedside table that I did pick up and it was a $40 purchase. A really nice pine timber set of bedside tables and uh, they are my most favorite furniture item to pick up. Very easy to sell and uh, this one sold within the space of just seven days. Uh, didn't have to do a lot of work to it either. It was in great working order. The drawers ran really well. Um, just a bit of a clean with some sugar soap and some gumption and then a bit of polish on top and this presented really well in photos. Um, look, I had this listed for $150. I couldn't get a bite within the space of seven days on this one. And then after seven days, somebody messaged me saying, would you take 120? And I, I couldn't say no, because I just really hadn't had a lot of uh, luck with this one. But I have sold them in the past for the 150, so I, I don't know what it is, but um, ended up selling for 120, $80 profit, uh, low on furniture sales this week, but I was really happy obviously to pick this one up. There was this other pair of bedside tables as well that I was able to pick up for just $30. Now, these weren't a great pair of bedside tables and if I'd had a really good week of sourcing furniture, I'd probably let these ones go by the wayside. Um, reason being is they were just a laminate. They weren't a timber or anything like that. It was a glass top, which was kind of helpful in the sense that you might've thought it might be worth a few more dollars having that feature. 
um, but it was just a plain black laminate. They would have been really cheap to buy brand new. Um, but there was two reasons. One, I was low on supply. I just had to buy it. And also they had it at a pretty fair price of just $30. So bought it for 30, I threw it on Marketplace and I've sold it for $100. Um, so not too bad there in a $70 profit, but I always knew that would fall a little bit lower. I wasn't gonna get the 150 for these. Um, when you're buying your bedside tables or really any furniture in general, you wanna be buying that solid timber. Um, when you're buying a veneer or if you're buying a laminate, it's not gonna be quite as much. But look, I mean, there is still money to be made out there on them if you're buying them at the right price. So picking it up for 30, selling it for 100, $70 profit. They were my only two furniture sales for the entire week. So I was, look, I was really happy to get them because they've helped my sales numbers um, as they always do. Now, as much as I love my ASICS footwear, if I had to pick a second brand that I love just as much, it would be the Hokas. The Hoka One One is a very quick, fast-selling shoe. So to get a good result here of a $60 sale was just awesome. I bought these for $5 in an op shop and I ran into this op shop at 4.59 and they closed at five o'clock. I said, I just wanna see your shoe rack. I just wanna run up and see what you got. And she said, no worries, run in. So I ran in and I had a look at the shoe racks and these were just sitting right there in front of me. And I knew that these were 50 or $60 shoes. So these ones were just $5 to purchase. So I quickly paid my five bucks and got out of there quick. And within the space of just uh, six days, these Hokas have sold for $60 on eBay. Um, so I've made a $55 profit. I do need to take some fees out for this one. I'm probably looking at deducting maybe six or $7. Um, but to make a little touch under 50 bucks profit is an awesome result and it's just a shoe for you guys to look out for. The Hoka One One, they do sell really, really fast. They are a great running shoe. This next one was just a really random item I found in the op shop that I just thought was worth a few more dollars than what they were asking. So I just picked it up and then in the space of uh, it's 26 days, this one has sold on eBay. So I was wrapped to see the sales result here. It wasn't money thrown away. Um, I bought this large, uh, I guess, four times the size of a standard keyboard. keyboard. Um, so this was just $6.50 in the op shops and uh, I looked at it and I'm like, $6.50, uh, anything electronic, um, I don't think it's worth anything under $10 if it's in good working order. So I got this one home, put it into the computer, it worked completely fine. And the comps on eBay were telling me it was worth about 25 bucks and that's exactly what it sold for on eBay plus postage. So when you take out the buying cost and you take out some fees, I've made about 15 bucks on this one, but it was just a fun one, you know, being in the op shops and seeing it and going, look, I just think that's worth a few more dollars to actually get the results at the end of the day on eBay for a profit um, yeah I thought it was a fun one so big extra large keyboard for the older folks out there um, it's come up for me and made me a few bucks so always dig through the brick a brack you never know what you're gonna find that's part of the fun now I'm a huge AFL fan so to find this Brisbane Lions training top in the op shops for just $15 was an awesome result this one was just gonna always sell a little bit more on eBay and I got $41.05 for it when you take off your fees and you take off obviously the uh, the buy cost it worked out to be about a $25 profit here so awesome result anything sort of AFL at the moment is in hot demand being in the finals and obviously the Lions playing pretty good footy um, was only going to help my cause so this was just a cool one if you do find anything in the sporting goods area in the sense of Guernseys um, definitely pick them up because there's a lot of super fans of these teams out there that are always going to want to buy them and uh, they do often move pretty quick so sort of any sport any sort of jersey that I see in the op shops I'm typically buying it if it's in good condition and it's not a horrendously bad fake um, but fake ones even if you're not into the certain sport you can often just simply tell by looking at it um, this one was an absolute genuine product for $15 and it sold for $41. So sporting goods, sporting guernseys, um, training tops, there's always plenty of money to be made in this category. Now, where I am here on the Gold Coast, I do buy a lot of board shorts for resale. They do sell really well. I call them free coffees because I buy them for $5 and sell them for $10 and make myself a free coffee. But uh, these ones here, the Thrills board shorts, have actually sold for a whole lot more. They've, um, I've gone ahead and, and found them with an actual price tag on them for 80 bucks. So new with tags, I knew this was gonna sell for more than just my free coffee. I've put it up on eBay and in the end, after dropping the price after a week or two, they ended up selling for 40 bucks. So they were 80 new, I still had the tags on them, probably could have a few more dollars here with this one but to sell it for 40 and to make a 36 dollar profit off buying them for just four dollars in the op shop um, i was pumped to get this result here because i've done a lot of board shorts but really the, the the i guess the big takeaway here with this one is find your items that do have the price tag still on them and you're going to make a whole lot more than without and it's probably already something that you know but i mean really i'm normally selling these for 10 just because i had a price tag it ended up being you know a 40 dollar sale for me so really crucial to keep digging and trying to find those price tags out there 
in the op shops because you're always going to make a few more dollars. Now I've had these Twilight dolls that you can see here behind me. Just um, I've got Jacob and Edward still to sell. I bought them as a set for sixty-five dollars, and I've slowly been selling them all off individually. Um, fortunately, just today I had one sell on eBay, so I've only got two left. I had five. I've sold three, and I've got two to go. So I've sold Jacob here for just twenty-five dollars. Now Jacob was not in great nick. I'll show you. Um, these could be worth upwards of fifty, sixty dollars, but Jacob had a bit of a ding. Um, not the greatest of condition there. Um, I put the um, I guess the description up on eBay really kind of detailing the fact that they it wasn't in great nick. With collectibles, um, they need to be in perfect condition to get your full price. Even though the actual toy inside is okay, you need the actual box to be okay as well. So he could have been potentially worth 40, but I marked him down to 25 just because he was a bit damaged. Um, but in the space of what, 38 days, he has sold, which was really good, $25. I bought him for 13, so I've doubled my money on this one. Um, but yeah, kind of cool to get him out of the way. I'll put him in the post tomorrow. I've only got one left to go. He's up there on eBay for $40. In the end, these ones I've bought as a set of five for $65, and they're ultimately gonna sell once they, the last one does sell. Um, I'll have made about $200 on these. So you can really find some good money in the collectible dolls, the Barbie doll series, um, anything like that. I, I, you know, I'm not one to collect them personally myself, but I do know that they sell well. So to get uh, Jacob out of the way, and I've only got Edward left to go and these ones are done, um, I was really happy to see that result pop up on eBay when I woke up this morning. Well, they are my 10 sold items, guys, that I wanted to show you this week. Hopefully you got a bit of a kick out of those and you can go and find some of them and make the same sort of a profit. Um, in this episode, I always love to go ahead and show you my weekly sales numbers just to see how I'm going. Um, I'll pull up the map here for you to have a bit of a look at now, but uh, I've done 25 items this week and that's a little bit lower. If you've watched past episodes, I typically average around the 30. Uh, cost of goods was $339. Total sales was just a tick over 1,000, uh, 1,029, which gave me a profit of 689. Now, profit margin is a little bit lower there, 67%, and that was in large part due to the retail arbitrage. Uh, buying a few more, I guess spending a few more dollars on retail items caused the, the profit margin to be a little bit less, but that's okay. I'm gonna continue in this space. Um, I think retail arbitrage certainly has its place. Uh, but then the other one as well for the reason why I was a little bit lower than normal was because of the furniture that I spoke of earlier. I just couldn't source as many items of furniture and they are really my $100, $150 sort of sale items. Um, so if I typically do sort of four to five. I mean, that's an extra $300 to $450 that you could add onto my total sales there. Um, that would have got me back up to where I normally sit around that sort of $1,200, $1,300, $1,400 a week. Um, so look, not by no means, I'm not um, you know, really, I guess, disheartened by that because I do know that not every week you're gonna find the items that you're after, but I'm gonna be placing a larger focus on just digging a little bit more on Facebook for furniture items and, and hopefully get a few more furniture sales next week. Um, just to try and balance out the numbers a little bit, having this being a, a little bit more of a down week than normal. Um, but yeah, look, $689 in my hand um, after a big week of selling and a big week of listing. Um, a lot of stuff purchased, a lot of stuff up on eBay to sell. So it's just a, a patience game, really. I know that I've done the work and it's all sitting there to be sold. Um, I'll just regularly keep attending to the listings and um, hopefully in the end get a few results there. Um, but yeah, another week of uh, numbers in the bank, another 10 items that I've been able to show you here today. Um, let me know if you haven't done so yet in the comments um, what your best sales item was for the week and your profit and uh, a little bit of a story with it. It'd be great to get the conversation started in the comments below, but uh, really do appreciate you tuning in once again to another episode of What Sold This Week. Uh, I'll be back next Sunday with another episode and happy selling out there for you in the meantime. And uh, yeah, look forward to catching you in the next one.